Okay, this is day two of the Yamaha um, Yamaha project here. And uh, yesterday I was going to, uh, I quit because I needed to determine how I was going to get this cylinder head off when the overhead camshaft is in place and the chain obviously is holding it there. And what I found was that right over here on the back, this large bolt right here actually is, uh, it's not a bolt at all, it's actually a timing chain tensioner and what it has is there's something on the end of this that as it inserts into there it actually tightens that timing chain so when you remove this large uh, timing chain retentioner bolt the timing chain should loosen up enough so that you can actually uh, get this uh, camshaft out and remove it and then uh, attack the uh, removal of the cylinder head so Big difference from yesterday as far as weather goes. Uh, everything out here is frozen. This is all sheer ice over here. Everything that melted yesterday has refrozen solid. We went from a high of about 58 degrees yesterday, which was very unseasonably warm for uh, this time of year, back down to uh, pretty much normal February weather. So, all right, so for starters, I'm going to take this bolt out. Okay, I removed this and what came out was basically this device right here, this large pin and this gasket and this spring. So I'm assuming at the other end of this spring is the uh, device that actually puts pressure on that, puts pressure on that chain down inside here and it's not backing out apparently because I'm not getting any, any uh, release of the tension here on this um, camshaft chain. So. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove these two 5 millimeter hex screws and remove this whole cap and see if I can't see uh, if there's something in there that needs to just be wiggled free to back out. Okay, uh, removing this cam tensioner, this uh, camshaft chain tensioner assembly did the trick. It's actually constructed in a way so it's got a, a little ratcheting cam mechanism here. So as it goes in and tightens under spring tension, it actually gets locked further and further in uh, by this. So the only way to get that to back out is for that to be released, which if I press on this, I can actually release it. But you can see as it gets pushed in, it would actually lock. So you have to take this out to get that to release. And then once you do that, now you can see I have now enough, looks like I'm gonna have enough slack in that chain and I'll probably be able to remove this camshaft so I'm going to try that now. Okay so now there's enough uh, slack in the chain that I can actually pull the chain up and off of the teeth of the camshaft but before I completely remove it and take the camshaft out what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie this uh, piece of thin wire that I have here just a scrap piece of wire I'm going to tie that around the chain and what that's going to do for me is it's going to uh, ensure that the chain doesn't slip off and fall down because it can actually fall all the way down into the crankcase and then you're going to have a real problem when you go to reassemble it. Um, it's more important I think when you're taking the, uh, if you're going to be taking the uh, only the head off. Um, I think that if you are leaving the cylinder in place, I don't know if it would even fall all the way down in there with the cylinder in place, you might be able to, be able to fish it out. But just to be on the safe side, I'm going to tie this piece of wire on here and that way when I go to take the camshaft out, I don't have to worry about losing that chain down inside there. Okay, I've removed the uh, camshaft and now the next thing I want to do is I want to remove right here, there's this plastic thing that slips in here. This is actually a guide that helps keep the, uh, the chain aligned and you just pop that out and this slides out. So I remove that. Now at this point, I'm going to re remove, disconnect two exhaust pipes from the cylinder head. Now to remove the cylinder head, there are seven fasteners that have to be dealt with. There are four 12 millimeter bolts that are clearly visible inside here. And then there's a five millimeter hex head bolt right here. And then there are two 12 millimeter nuts 
cap nuts that are kind of hidden that actually screw onto the end of the stud that comes down from the head and goes through this opening on the cylinder. So you have to get underneath here. So you need an open end 12 millimeter wrench to get that one. And then the other one is exactly opposite on the other side, uh, tucked under here, underneath the exhaust pipes, right? Kind of where my finger's pointing now. So a little tricky to get at, but you gotta get all those out first. Okay, the uh, 12 millimeter cap screws that are hidden that I just talked about. Um, got the back one out, no problem, but this front one, unfortunately, to get the wrench on there, the uh, bend of the exhaust pipes here is actually in the way. So I'm going to have to remove the exhaust pipe. Um, rather than remove the entire exhaust system, I'm going to see whether or not I can just remove these uh, this Y pipe section here where these two pipes go into one that actually comes up and it actually goes into the uh, rest of the exhaust right here at this point. So if I can uh, get this bolt on this clamp loosened, then I should be able to remove this pipe and that should give me access. And it looks like, I don't know if it's the other side, but I might not be able to get a socket onto that bolt with this breather pipe in the way. So I might also end up just removing that pipe depending on how bad it is to get in there. Okay, I removed this section of ductwork right here. Uh, actually I actually had loosened this bolt the other day when I needed to get some clearance in there to get at one of the other bolts. And uh, so that just popped right out of this section here. These clamps are badly rusted. I put some penetrating lubricant on them, but the screws are just stripping. I can't get a good grip on the head, so I'm gonna end up uh, just grinding those or cutting them off and putting new bands on at some point later. But for now, I was able to just pop it off. And uh, so that gets this out of the way. And what that does for you is that exposes this bolt right here, which is for the clamp for the exhaust pipe. I, uh, I've got some penetrating lubricant on the other side where the nut is that uh, this attaches to. And hopefully, I'll be able to get this out without it uh, stripping. Worst case scenario is I'm um, hoping it, you know, worst case is that it just snaps off and then I'll just uh, deal with that later uh, as far as that clamp goes. But for right now, I'm going to just try and get that bolt out, and hopefully this exhaust section from here going forward to the uh, actual cylinder head will come off. Okay, that uh, 12 millimeter bolt on the exhaust clamp loosened, and I was able to uh, take this section of pipe off. And what I discovered is I looked down in there and I could see water idea how much water is sitting in this thing. The water is black from the car that was soaked up, so it's been sitting in there for quite a while. So that's uh, just an indicator of how swamped this thing got when they jumped it into the lake. Okay, I got the cylinder head off, and this is what we're looking at. Uh, you can see a lot of rust in there. There's actually a pool of sludge, which would be probably from the water reacting with the carbon that was in there. And Eventually the water evaporated out and left behind that just pool of sludge, but it's clear to see why that's seized. So uh, I'm going to try and clean that out as best as I can and see if I can't work on breaking that free because I want to get that piston free of the cylinder walls so that I can remove the cylinder because then I'll be able to uh, clean and inspect the parts and then determine whether or not uh, this is going to need to be rebored, or will it uh, require just uh, honing? And also uh, see if the piston's salv salvageable. But so I'm going to need to clean that up first, and then see what I can do about getting it to break free. And then, uh, as far as the cylinder head goes, I removed the cylinder head, and that's kind of an equal boat as far as corrosion. Lots of corrosion. Um, we're going to have to take a look at the valve seats after and see how that is. There's all different wisdom on how to uh, free up a stuck piston in the cylinder. Uh, you can just Google a subject and find all kinds of ideas. And everybody's got their own method. Um, sometimes I've, I've used some methods and had success and 
then that method didn't work on the next job so I tried different methods so uh, today what I'm using is um, I get this product here uh, called uh, Hilco Lube it's basically a uh, one of those magic formulas similar to uh, Croil um, in the past I've also had success with uh, CLP break free um, but in this particular case I'm going to use the uh, Hilco Lube I'm just going to spray it around the uh, perimeter there to try and get it to soak into that joint there and I'm going to just leave it to settle and uh, go have a little lunch and then when I come back out I'm going to attempt to uh, put some mechanical stress on it without damaging it and the uh, way that I like to do that is I use a wood block and I bang on the piston now the key is when you bang and you want to bang here and here not here and here because if you bang here and here you'll, you'll just be putting stress on the wrist pin so if you bang here and here you'll be actually rocking the piston in a way that it's actually designed to move slightly anyways and uh, that's the way that I like to do it uh, sometimes if it's not too frozen you can get uh, expose the crankshaft and get a wrench on the crankshaft or the flywheel nut and actually put some serious torque on it that way uh, however you run the risk of damaging the uh, connecting rod if you overdo it so I don't really like to do that okay I uh, got the piston unstuck I used a long wooden stake and just tapped on the two spots that I mentioned in the last video and didn't have to really hit too hard saw it move a tiny bit and then pulled on the uh, starter cord here and and it uh, it moved it went down and came back up and then it stopped again and the reason why it stopped now is because I inadvertently forgot that I needed to uh, be holding on to the timing chain so what's happened is the timing chain folded over itself but that'll be easy enough to correct once I get the cylinder off uh, so now I'm going to remove the cylinder which is a matter of removing uh, these two nuts on this uh, back side here one at each corner and then down through these holes two bolts and then two five millimeter screws hex head screws right here and here I've unbolted the shifter assembly and removed its bracket to give me a little more access here while I'm working especially to get these allen head screws out the five millimeter ones um, if you have a really long handled five millimeter allen head wrench then that's the way to do it that's what this relief that's in the fins here is for to allow that I didn't have one that was quite large enough so I had to use a a smaller one and uh, uh, with the right angle to it so I wanted to get some more room there anyways plus it's gonna help me anyways um, when I'm taking the cylinder head off I stopped at this point here what I've done is I untied my safety wire and uh, ran it down out of the cylinder freeing it from the cylinder so now um, I can pull the cylinder off but you want to be careful when you're pulling off a cylinder like this you don't want to let the piston just flop because it could uh, get damaged um, on like that stud right there for instance is actually just resting against it gently but you don't want it to just flop out of there and get scratched up so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a rag and I'm gonna put place a rag around the base of that piston and then pull the cylinder head uh, the cylinder jug right off okay I've removed the cylinder or jug as it's sometimes called and expose the piston and there's my cylinder so I'm going to take that down into the basement where I clean it up get a better look at it and uh, now what I want to do is I want to remove that piston from the connecting rod which there should be a clip that allows 
for the wrist pin to slide out. I don't see one on this side, so this might just have one on the other side, and it might be a, a style that the uh, wrist pin can only slide out in one direction. So I'll take a look at that. Actually, uh, just noticed it is in there. There is a snap ring on each side, and it's just a uh, an inside snap ring that's uh, basically there's this little hole right here that's your uh, point where you can stick a sharp instrument in to uh, pop that clip out so I'm gonna pop that clip out now but first I'm gonna just try and clean up this piston it's pretty scuzzy so I can hold on to it without getting all uh, uh, covered in the uh, residue that's the mixture of the penetrating fluid that I used to free the thing up in the first place and the uh, the rust and gunk and carbon. Okay, once you remove one of the uh, retaining clips, you uh, slide the wrist pin out, tap it out from the other side, uh, and uh, once you slide it out far enough, it will allow you to free the piston from the top of the connecting rod. So, uh, I've pretty much wrapped up what I'm going to do out here. It is very cold, so uh, my hands are getting pretty cold and frozen. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up my tools and then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, stuff a rag down in this hole and then I'm going to cover this with plastic so that any rain or snow we might get uh, doesn't end up going down inside that motor because right now from what I can see I don't see any rust down inside there so uh, it looks to me like a lot of the water may have been just uh, concentrated in the, uh, the intake area and the exhaust sucked in through the intake and through the exhaust pipe and the cylinder and the bottom end of the engine looks like it's pretty clean uh, eventually I'm gonna of course drain the oil out and examine what that looks like and see if I can see any contamination in that change the filter and all that but before I even go to that step I want to see whether or not uh, this piston cylinder and head and valves and everything are salvageable. Alright, so that's it for today.